are HasLab projects a ripoff? Personally, I don't think so, uh, but there's a lot of people that seem to think that they really are. And it comes down to the rhetoric of these are items that could be produced and sold at retail and blah, blah, blah. They really can't. Um, you have HasLab being a side project for the company that is purely fan service. This is not a, uh, a regular production item that they could produce cheaply. It's not something that you can go in and see at Walmart because they, it's so big and they're so expensive that they, they just can't risk in the, uh, the current market. They just can't risk having these things set on shelves. They can't risk them going unsold or retailers deciding not to buy them because all in all Hasbro sells to retailers and distributors not to the consumer. There is no such thing anymore as Hasbro Direct to the consumer, except for HasLab. HasLab is the direct, the direct to consumer uh, venue. So if we take a look at past HasLabs, yeah, I've got them pulled up on my computer here right now. Um, things that have funded, things haven't funded. The Star Wars line has actually had two failed HasLabs here very recently. The uh, Riva, the third sister, Force Effects lightsaber, four ninety nine. They wanted five hundred dollars for this thing. The price point was out of this world for what you got. Uh, we only saw, I think, maybe one or two tiers shown. Uh, one of the tier unlocks was just. Uh, a cheap looking stand and if I, I'm not a Star Wars collector I'm just going by what I saw people talking about was that they basically just were out of touch with the fans and nobody really wanted that um, as far as for how many units sold uh, how many backers it had the target was 5,000 backers just to fund it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but they only reached 1,413 backers on that one. The next, um, actually this one came before the lightsaber, the Rancor. Now, the Rancor, if they, I think the timing was probably bad on the Rancor, and some of the tier unlocks were just not good. I mean, it, it, it's a bit insulting to have a $349 item and one of the one of the special unlocks one of the bonuses was uh the handler which was a cool figure but one of the bonuses was a uh, a cardboard cutout background for it and I, it was just kind of um uh, insulting if that's if if they had offered that for a haslab i was interested in uh, i would have felt like it was insulting to me as a fan because these are supposed to be fan service and this also haslab uh is a great reflection of um fans being the reason these exist uh if if it's not for the fans it doesn't get made and they are truly uh responsible for the success or failure of these 9,000 backers to fund it, and it almost got funded at 8,533. I thought it was actually going to get funded. I really did, and it just uh, it fell just a little bit short there. So uh, the Hero Quest, and I'm going through, I'm going to try to go through all of them. I don't see the Cookie Monster HasLab on here, but I know that the Cookie Monster HasLab failed miserably. Hero Quest was a hundred bucks and this was a huge game i played hero quest when i was a kid loved it and the fact that they are they've re-released that game and they did a haslab version that had all kinds of awesome extra stuff the target was one million dollars on a hundred dollar item it almost quadrupled that amount we had 3,721,699 pledges on the HeroQuest game system. 
and I think that that was an amazing success for the uh, for the Haslab teams. We have the Star Wars Razor Crest. Now the Razor Quest, the Razor Quest, the Razor Crest did get funded. It required six thousand backers, and it received twenty eight thousand one hundred eleven. Let's look at what some of the if it'll show what some of the oh come on what some of the uh tiers for this were let's see unlock number five was a carded jawa i know there's more come on where's uh anyway it reached five tiers of unlocks I'm not going to sit here and mess with it. This is the first time I've actually looked at it. The Sentinel. Uh, the Marvel Legends Sentinel. I purchased one of these. It was $350. $349.99. I would have bought more, but I really couldn't swing the price at that point in time. And it needed 6,000 backers to fund. That one received 21,873 backers. And with this gigantic figure... You would, uh, you got, uh, let's see, what was it? You got some extra parts and pieces for the figure. You got extra heads, you got extra hands, and you got at least, I think it's two to three six inch Marvel Legends figures. Let me see if I can pull this up here. So you had the extra hands, you got a battle damaged kit that came with it. I've got it sitting over here, but I don't want to open it up and and find out exactly what all's in that box. I, I've opened it for a video and just not gonna go through it again. I know there's at least two six inch figures that came with it that were exclusive to this line. And this is another one that I saw people talking about, well, they could make this and release it at retail for cheaper. Well, they probably could and then stores wouldn't buy it because they wouldn't wanna set on it. If you haven't noticed, the toy department doesn't really sell 300 plus dollar items electronics does with like gaming systems and whatnot but not an action figure not a toy like this if this was released in uh, a retail setting chances are it would have much much less articulation and this thing was like crazy articulated i mean all the way down to the joints of the fingers uh if they would have released this as a retail type item it probably would have been an oversized pop doll or a big hollow vinyl thing. And that's not in any way, shape, or form what this figure is. It's a big, solid Marvel Legends figure that's uh, that's like almost two feet tall. Or right at two feet tall. I don't... Uh, let's see here. The height measurement is on here. 26. He's over two feet tall. 26.3 inches tall for the Sentinel. 350 bucks for that, a couple figures and some extra accessories and heads and whatnot. Hell yeah, I was down for it. And then uh, let's see. Uh, I the, the I'll get into secondary market prices here in a minute, but you have the Haslab Unicron. This thing was a monster. It was three feet across in planetary mode. And it's a transformer that goes from robot to planet mode. Uh, they released this as part of the War for Cybertron series. I missed out on it. I couldn't swing the price at the time. Uh, I believe he, yeah, he was $575. And they needed 8000 to back it. And 10000 plus backers is what uh, what the final number ended up being. You got a stand and you got a couple of extra things with it. I uh, don't think all the tiers got unlocked, but it was an amazing transformer. Uh, let's see. Now, a successful Star Wars has lab. Uh, over 5,000 backers. I, it doesn't say exactly how many, but the target was 5,000 backers uh, at uh, $499. This thing was 500 bucks. So there's a lot of people that uh, love that thing. I know that still have it today that absolutely love it. Uh, some of the secondary pricing with Haslabs, people buy these for an investment 
and they're able to flip them afterwards. And normally, at a minimum, they double their money. The uh, Unicron figure, I know for a fact, I have seen these sell for $1,500. You're talking triple. Uh, the Razor Crest, I've seen, I've seen the Razor Crest sell at double. The uh, uh, Java Sail Barge, I've seen that sell for double to triple. So these are things that uh, that end up being a good investment for people that want to buy multiples and then flip a couple of them, sell them, or scalp them. And they want to sell a couple of them to cover their costs for the one that they're going to keep. I do that. I know a lot of people that do that. The uh, the Ghostbusters Plasma Series Proton Pack. That was another HasLab that came out. Uh, 7,000 backers. They got 19,062 backers on that, which kind of surprised me considering the fact that those figures did not sell well at all. They were all over the place in Walmart on clearance for like 11 bucks. I got a set of them. I thought they were really cool figures. The Transformers Victory Saber. Here's another one that did really well in funding. It needed 11,000 backers and it got 26,211. The thing about these successful HasLab projects is that they catered to the fans that were funding them. You have Marvel Legends Galactus. I bought two of these guys at $400. No hesitation whatsoever. Um, I got in on it pretty much, uh, pretty much right away. And he is huge. He is a giant. And he is, I think he's 28 inches tall. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He's 32 inches tall. He's almost, almost three feet tall. This thing's going to be a monster. And you got all kinds of extras. You got extra heads. You got extra face plates. You got a couple of uh, extra figures with it and you, three extra figures to be exact that all are very nice looking, unique figures. That's what we need with a HasLab project to succeed. You need a popular character and you need to include uh, some very nice stretch goals. I'm talking about another one that funded in epic proportions. This is the fastest funded HasLab ever. The Cobra class, the G.I. Joe Classified series, Cobra Hiss, needed 8,000. Now, they had a very special early bird figure. If it funded, I think, within three days, um, they would include uh, a, a, an extra. Beyond tiers, like, it, it wasn't a tier unlock or anything like that. It was just an extra figure that we will get to vote on. Uh, the color scheme of that figure, but 300 bucks and they needed 8,000 backers to fund it. We ended up with 26,772 backers on GI Joe, the, uh, the classified hiss. And we did all of the tier unlocks and <laughs> wanted more. And they basically let this thing set for about a month with no additional unlocks or anything, which is totally understandable. There's only a set number of unlocks that they had planned for it, whatever. Uh, no additional unlocks, and it just kept growing and growing, which tells me that um, the classified series is far from uh, <laughs> the loser that a lot, of, uh, a lot of people act like it is. So, especially at $300, that was, uh, that was of a huge... Uh, like it was well worth that in my opinion. Uh, I think that a HasLab project should be perceived as being worth it just for the base offering. This thing's huge, which a HasLab should be big. It's extremely nice. It's full of features. It is feature rich. There's LEDs. There's all kinds of little uh, moving parts all over it. All the figures that it came with, those are, in my opinion, just extras beyond the base offering, which is what they should be. At $300, this thing, it was just out of this world. 
Now, the Sky Striker has lab funded, but it didn't reach all of the tiers, and I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, some of the tier unlocks were really cool, and that final unlock was a two-pack deck crew figure set, which I hope they do as a Hasbro Pulse exclusive later on. But it came with O-ring figures. Uh, the packaging was said to be uh, more like, not, not the retro style packaging, but like uh, actual card backs like from the 80s and whatnot. Thicker, better, much like the card backs that we received with the Duke and Cobra Commander figures uh, that came out with in the, uh, the two-pack, the Hasbro Pulse exclusive two-pack. And we just, we were just short of uh, breaking all the tiers for this. And it needed 10,000 backers. And we got 16,088. This thing, the price was right. The price was great. $229. A lot of people looked at this and said, well, I can buy a 1980s Sky Striker complete for this much money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you're also talking about a 40-year-old piece of brittle-ass plastic that is prone to breakage. And it's also not the same thing. It's not the same mold. It's not the same design. This, this, the, the G.I. Joe Sky Striker, what a lot of people missed out on. And I, I say a lot of people because I saw them commenting about how it was exactly the same thing. We've already got this. It's just the mold for a modern Sky Striker. No, it's not. It's updated in several different ways. And it is a licensed design from Northrop Grumman, the F-14 Tomcat. This is the Sky Striker, the F-14 Tomcat. And it's, in my opinion, it's just an amazing looking piece. And they've shown us a few updates uh, in live streams and whatnot. And this thing is just fantastic. Fan service to the max, just like the His Tank. So let's talk about the Hell Charger. They're not gonna call it the Hell Charger. Uh, the Marvel Legends HasLab engine of vengeance it needs eight i'm sorry it needs nine thousand backers right now we have five thousand eight hundred fifteen we've lost about 300 backers so far since it did not hit the early bird i think that a lot of people are disappointed actually i know a lot of people are disappointed in what they're getting for the price point the price point $349.99. You're talking about a HasLab set that's basically, in my opinion, uh, the equivalent of the His Tank, the Marvel Legends equivalent, the Marvel Legends equivalent of the G.I. Joe classified His Tank. It should have been priced the same. To me, I would be comfortable purchasing just the base offering at $250. It's a very nice car. It holds two figures, and all of the other features that it has are really cool. The LED light-up stuff, uh, interchangeable parts, and uh, the flames. The flames look awesome. It's a really nice piece. But I don't see it being worth the $349. That price point, coupled with what you get and missing the early bird, one of my friends put it best... It's like they dropped a huge turd on the Marvel Legends community, and now everyone's arguing about what to do with it. It seems some people want this thing pretty bad, and some people want this thing to fail pretty bad. And then you also have another group of people who just want nothing to do with it whatsoever. They want their hands as far away from it as they can get. I can't say that I blame them. There's some people that love this character, Personally, I don't care too much for the new Ghost Rider. Um, he's not a spirit of vengeance. Uh, it's a totally different take on the, the whole Ghost Rider mythos. Yes, they, they all exist at the same time, but it's just, um, it, it's something different. I just don't, I, I don't feel any kind of a uh, an attachment to it. And that's probably because I... I really wasn't into the comics whenever it came out. I was pretty excited whenever uh, whenever this version of Ghost Rider came out on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but they didn't keep them around very long because it was expensive to uh, 
do the CGI for him. And he was supposed to get his own show and didn't. And there's just all kinds of stuff going on with it. But um, I, I've read a little bit of the comics and whatnot. They're good. I just, they don't really do a whole lot for me. I don't, to me, Ghost Rider should be on a motorcycle of some kind. Like the previous Ghost Riders, for the most part. Except the, the one that rode an elephant, the one that rode a mammoth, the one that rode a, uh, a horse or, you know. Uh, things like that, but the, uh, the hell charger just really doesn't do it for me. It's just, it's a big car. And I mean, that, eh, okay, whatever. Anyway, at two fifty, I'd be in, I'd buy multiples at two fifty, and see what bonus unlocks we got, but it's almost as if they have the tiers planned out. They're all figures. Uh, Mephisto looks like a retooled Atuma with, um, I can't remember what they said the hands are from. Somebody's, somebody said that the hands and feet are from another character, but it's a, I'm pretty sure that's a retooled Atuma body, which is, it's cheap. Come on. Uh, if you're going to make something like this, at least make new molds for something that, that doesn't exist yet. Uh, Mephisto should have been a brand new mold altogether. Uh, not just pieces put onto another body with the mold modified or whatever. Um, like let's, let's really, if you want to do fan service and you want the fans to, if you want the fans to want this, then make it something they can't live without. Make it something that they can't just pass on so easy. Now the figure looks fantastic at uh, the ghost rider figure. Uh, we were supposed to, the early bird version was going to be a, um, a human form Robbie Reyes figure, which would have been really cool to have, uh, to use with the car in street mode. And, um, the ghost rider figure with the flaming skull helmet and everything, uh, for the, uh, the ghost rider version, uh, the possessed version of the car, because it has two modes. It has a street mode and then has the hellfire mode. And the uh, the regular uh, Robbie Reyes figure would have been great to have with the street mode of the car. <laughs> what more would people want a reason to buy two of these things for rather than to have on a display of the uh, the Hellfire version and the street version, both with their uh, accentuating characters? And uh, as far as the other the other tier unlocks go, I'm assuming there's probably going to be three tier unlocks. It's almost like they're saying that the figures are going to like. You, let's put this at 250 bucks. You get another 150 dollars to spend on uh, four. Let's say four figures or even three figures. That's 50 bucks a piece uh, on these on these figures on these additional figures with the car that's a lot to that's a lot to bite off uh that's that's a shit sandwich that nobody wants to start at either end and you uh you basically just have a recipe for either failure or not fully succeeding it's like they just counted in the pricing of the uh, of all the tiers and they want everyone to pay for all of that up front without seeing it and I'm not typically one to complain about stuff like this because, you know, this is, uh, nobody's forcing me to buy it. I don't have to buy this. It's not health insurance. Um, but if it was something that I wanted bad enough, I would. And there might be enough people that want it bad enough that they'll, they'll pay the high price. I'm just not one of those people. I see a lot of people complaining uh, to the point of stop letting Hasbro take advantage of us, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is, this is one of those things that you really can't affect. If you want change, if you don't think it's worth it, don't buy it. And if it doesn't fund, they'll get the message. The last couple Marvel Legends HasLabs funded... The Star Wars community spoke out, and the last two of theirs did not. The G.I. Joe community spoke out, and the classified his tank funded faster than any other HasLab has. So take that for what it's worth, and enjoy your toys, guys, uh, because they truly are a luxury item. This is not this is not a commodity that's necessary for your survival or anything like that. It's purely 
a luxury. Nobody's forcing you to buy it. You don't have to buy it to live. So if you like it, buy it. And if you don't, you don't have to. But you also don't have to try and influence other people who may want to buy it to not. Because chances are, if if you influence them to not buy it, they're going to regret it later on. Now, there's also a tactic to this, telling the people not to buy it, buying it yourself and, you know, flipping it to them later when it's pretty scummy. But, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. Check out the description of the video for links to useful things. Um, Action Media Reviews, Merchandise, YouTube... Uh, there's a couple of uh, YouTube videos linked in there, I think. There's also Facebook pages where you can join Facebook groups and pages and whatnot. So, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this little TED Talk. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all soon.